Welcome everyone. This video is to show how ultrasound can be used to diagnose uh, nerve changes in leprosy. So leprosy is a very common and infective cause of nerve damage and nerve thickening is one of the hallmark signs in leprosy. So this makes it necessary to get a diagnostic tool to detect early nerve damage including ones that are subclinical. Now ultrasonography is a non-invasive and cost effective modality to study changes at nerve. Improved image quality, portability and price reductions will make it possible for it to become a tool that can be used in countries which are resource poor and especially in areas where leprosy are endemic. It is also used to calculate the cross-sectional area and to study the anatomical changes of the peripheral nerves. Now, what are the changes that happen in the nerve? So basically early nerve changes include something called axonal atrophy due to the hypophosphorylation of the nerve proteins. So this results in inflammation around the nerve and there is uh, increased entry of M. leprae that is the bacteria from the perineurium which is outside to the inner nerve covering called endoneurium and there is upgradation and release of chemicals such as nitrotyrosine and matrix metalloproteases all of which results in transient pressure variations within and around the nerve leading to ischemia reperfusion injury. Now the objective of our study here is to compare the nerve changes uh, using ultrasound in patients and to compare them to normal healthy individuals. So we took 35 patients and 30 controls and checked 6 nerve points in each of these individuals. So that made it 210 points in uh, 35 patients and 180 nerve points in controls. And they were examined clinically and after that an ultrasound was done using a 7 to 10 linear transducer probe. And they were looked for uh, thickness, the nerves were checked for thickness as well as cross-sectional area and any kind of changes like inflammation, loss of fascicles and hypoechocity. When we looked at the patients that we recruited, most of them, that is around 50% of our patients, lie between the age group of 30 to 50 years and a majority, that is 75% of them were males. Most of them were newly diagnosed patients, patients of leprosy, so uh, with a disease duration of less than six months. So when we look at the clinical thickness of these uh, nerves that we examined, there were around 86 clinically thickened nerves. Around 30% uh, were asymmetrically thickened and 55% showed rope-like thickening and around 14% showed nodular or beaded thickening. So this is an image of one of our patients. So we can see the uh, patches of uh, skin uh, showing evidence of leprosy over the face as well as enlarged greater auricular nerve on the right side of this patient. We can also see in these images the common peroneal nerve which is branching out into its superficial and deeper branches just above the ankle. So that thick cord like structure that we are seeing is actually a thickened nerve. So when we graded the tenderness or how painful the nerve enlargement was, around 30% had no tenderness and 38% um, patients complained of tenderness when asked for it and around 19% of the patients winced on palpation and around 11% withdrew the limb on palpation. So this kind indicated severe tenderness. And out of that 210 nerve points that we examined in our patients, 86 were found to be thickened clinically and 138 or, uh, were found to be thickened on ultrasound. So it uh, showed that on an average around 2.8 thickened nerves per person were enlarged clinically and 3.9 nerves per person was enlarged on ultrasound. So we looked at each nerve individually and found that the number of cases with thickened nerves, that is the number of patients with thickened nerves was significantly higher than the number of healthy individuals with, with thickened nerves. And this was statistically significant and the p-values are as shown. Most of them had a p-value of less than 0 0.001. 
So the sensitivity of ultrasound uh, over clinical examination has also been supported in the past by other studies and uh, that is why we have taken up this study to check if this is really so. And uh, we find that clinical testing can only detect the presence of neuropathy which indicates that there is already a large amount of nerve damage. However, ultrasound is used to demonstrate even subclinical nerve enlargement and inflammation. We have compared our findings to another study that was done and found that similar to the other study, focal nerve thickening was the most common finding on ultrasound, followed by hypoechocity and loss of fascicular pattern. Now, fusiform thickening and nerve fibrosis were newer findings in our study that has not been shown previously. And we also found that there was an increased vascularity on Doppler in the thickened nerves. And there was also seen a higher ratio of cross-sectional width is to height, um, which implies that the thickened nerves were more rounded in contour. Now here the arrow points towards a normal image of a nerve on ultrasound, which shows uh, some fascicles within. And this is what we call as a bundle of straw appearance. This is an inflamed and thickened nerve. So here we see that the nerve outline is more rounded and it is more hypoechoic or darker and there is also increase in the vascular signals on Doppler that we see on the inset here. Now this is a longitudinal view of the same nerve which shows a fusiform enlargement and uh, there is also seen increased uh, vascularity on Doppler in the fusiform area. This is a thickened nerve of another patient uh, which shows some septae like structures within. It is also thickened, it is also hypoechoic and uh, the septae is kind of indicative of fibrosis that might have happened due to chronic inflammation of the nerve. So we try to assess what cutoff values we need to consider to say that the nerve is thickened on ultrasound or not. So we have used what is known as receiver operator characteristics for this. And we have arrived at various cutoff values for each individual nerve. It could for the right and left ulnar, median as well as common peroneal. And we have also established the sensitivity and specificity factors for each of these cutoff values. So we see that most of the cutoff values lie between 0 0.08 and 0 0.10 centimeter square. Now, what are the limitations that we faced and what are the difficulties we say, faced? First of all, we did not have a gold standard for comparison, such as a nerve conduction study. That is one. Second is um, training dermatologists in this regard of using an ultrasound and accessibility of an ultrasound, especially in uh, resource poor countries, are matters that need to be addressed. We also felt that following up these patients for nerve changes while they are on treatment could further contribute to our knowledge on nerve involvement in leprosy and how medications can reverse or alter these changes. So to conclude, ultrasound is an objective marker of nerve thickening in leprosy and it is an important modality in diagnosis of conditions like pure neural Hansen's uh, with smeared negativity which does warrant immediate treatment. Uh, so these are the references that we have used for our study and thank you for joining us today. We hope this talk was useful.